Welcome to another season of Georgia Southern Football. I'm Josh Aubrey here at Paulson Stadium for this evening's season opener between the Georgia Southern Eagles and the West Georgia Wolves. A much anticipated season opener as the Eagles are coming up. Their worst season in the modern football history, of course. The Chris Hatcher era getting underway here this evening as well. A lot of questions to be answered. I'll send you right out for those answers. An emotional start to the game as the bronze bust of the legendary Irk Russell was revealed prior to the game. And a new tradition was started as Coach Hatcher would give it a kiss. And the players then either touched or head-butted the statue. Onto the game and two questions answered early. First, Jason Foster was your starting quarterback. And second, maybe he should have played a little more last year. Foster on the second play from scrimmage goes 54 yards for the score. And yes, the extra point was good. 7 nothing Eagles. West Georgia responds as James Kinnebrew goes in from four yards out, and we're tied at seven all. The Eagle defense getting on track. Jonathan Loving with the hit for a loss. The Wolves back to punt, and this one blocked by Tim Camp. The Eagles take over in excellent field position. Unfortunately, their drive would stall. And they'd have to settle for a 21-yard field goal attempt by Jesse Hartley. It's up and good, and they'd retake the lead 10-7. The Wolves storm right back, though, scoring two touchdowns in the second quarter, including this 11-yard run by Keats Baldwin. And the Eagles go to the half trailing 21-10. Halftime saw another tribute to Irk Russell, as his name was enshrined along with his three national championship seasons. The old coach would have been quite proud of the team that came out in the second half. After a drive that ended in a fumble, Jason Foster moving the team downfield, picking up a first down, and then he throws it over to Raja Andrews. Foster with 124 yards passing. Jason then does it himself. The play designed to go to the right. He sidesteps the defender, cuts it left, turns up field, and he's gone. 56 yards for the touchdown. GSU trims the lead to 21 to 17. Next, ladies and gentlemen, it's Zeke Rogier. Remember that name. The true freshman showing his speed. Going 41 yards for the score. 24 21 Eagles. They'd never look back. On to the fourth quarter. Jason Foster hits Mike McIntosh in stride. This one good. For an 81-yard touchdown, GSU pulling away. They'd take a 31-21 lead here. Lamar Lewis with a big game. He'd finish with 150 yards rushing. The Eagles as a team piling up 477 yards rushing. Zeke would then go in for his second touchdown of the game and for his career for that matter. 38-21 and the finishing touch, a thing of beauty coming up here by Jason Foster. He'd finish with 231 yards, three touchdowns rushing and one passing as well. Take a look as he picks up some blocks but does quite a bit of this himself. 45-21 at this point. The finishing touch provided by a couple of fourth quarter interceptions, including this one by Chris Collier. And the Hatcher era starts off in style, 45-21, Georgia Southern. There's two different teams that showed up. The first half was completely different than the second half. We came out and just did our job the second half. And putting up a goose egg in the second half feels great. Anything in particular in the locker room that you guys have talked about or may have fired you out? Coach Andrews, Coach Andrews got in there and just yelled at us for a little bit, and uh, it was good yelling. It wasn't, there was nothing negative; it was all positive, and just he was hammering to us that we were going to win this game. Our scheme was good, and all we had to do was make plays. We came in at halftime, told them we weren't going to make any adjustments. Uh, that what we did was solid. They just got to believe in it, and came out the second half. You know, we challenged them. Uh, you know, a lot of them we challenged their manhood. Basically, told them that uh, that we wanted to shut them out on the second half. I think the kids did a great job of responding, came out and played ball a lot better in the second half. It's very important to walk out a win. You know, first day we've been practicing for 
30 days for you know without a game. Uh, West Georgia's already played, so kind of had a little leg up on us on that. So we had to come back and get back on track and come out here to win. Hey, you know, we, we played well there, um, you know, at certain times of the first half. We just couldn't get any rhythm and consistency going. Second half, we didn't really change much. Our guys just, they started executing better and, and playing the kind of football that I knew they were capable of playing. Personally, a pretty emotional uh, way to start the game there with the uh, unveiling of Burks. Yeah, it, it, was a, it was a really good evening for us. I'll tell you, the most emotional we probably got is when we pulled up on the buses and, and there was such a, a huge crowd of people there waiting for us and, and, and supporting the football team. And that always gets your boys fired up. And hopefully now after coming from behind, these guys are like me. They always believe they're going to win. And um, if we can keep that attitude instilled in them, we, heck, who knows, we may have a special season.